I'm just letting y'all know now that my synopsis of these books are going to be hecka interesting. And basically the only reason I have for you guys to read all of these are because they're creepy and I enjoyed them. So don't expect this video to be like some wisdom shit. Because it's not going to be. It's just me being like, yo, this book is dope. Read it. So, sorry in advance. <laughs> And today I'm here with a video all about spooky book recommendations. Since it is October, your girl needs to do her spooky book recommendations. I have a spooky book recommendations that I did last year, so I'm not going to mention any of the books that I did in that video. But if you want to check that out, then go up there and look at it. But without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I'm going to recommend is Night Film by Mercer Purcell. I don't have a physical copy of this book because my ex-boyfriend took it and didn't give it back and we broke up, which is why I said ex. So he still has it, so deal with this picture, I'm still bitter about it. But I absolutely love this book. I give it a 5 out of 5 stars. I have a full review of it if you're interested to hear my full thoughts on it. This book was so dang spooky. The book follows an investigative journalist who has been hunting a famous horror film director. The director's name is Cardova and basically Scott McGrath, who's the journalist, tried to write an article about this director and it kind of blew up in his face and his career ended. Several years later, Cardova's daughter Ashley commits suicide and this causes Scott to become very interested in the director again and so he launches another investigation into the death of Ashley. So as he's investigating the death, he meets two people, Nora and Hopper, who kind of become his like right-hand men in the investigation. As they're investigating Cardova, they start to realize that things aren't always as it seems. It's just so creepy and there's like multimedia in the book that makes the book so much more interactive and interesting in my opinion. It was one of my favorite books in 2016, so like highly recommend you reading this book. It was hecka good and it's a great October read in my opinion. My next recommendation is The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. I held off on reading this book for so long. I have a full review of it if you're interested in my full thoughts, but I had no idea that the book took the turn that it took and I was expecting something completely different. I'm not going to go into it because that like gives away the whole premises. Basically it follows Blue Sergeant who meets four boys Adam, Noah, Gansey, and Ronan, and they are the Raven Boys, and it's basically their adventure of trying to find this king who died in the town that they live in, but then Blue's family is also psychic, but Blue is the only one in her family who's not psychic, but she has the ability to make psychic powers amplified in other people, and it, like, it's hecka confusing, but it's like so good and I highly suggest reading it in October because it just has that like spooky vibe and just read it. It's real good, okay? The next book that I have to recommend is called Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Honestly, any Gillian Flynn book is spooky in my opinion. I think she's such a great author to read in October just because everything she writes is so creepy. This book follows Camille Preaker who works for a newspaper agency. She gets sent to her hometown in order to cover a story of mysterious deaths of these two girls and she realizes that this is probably unhealthy for her because a lot of things took place in her hometown that kind of screwed with her a little bit. But Camille decides to take the job and she goes back to her hometown and she realizes that it might not have been the best idea for her because of some things that happened in her childhood and they're all getting brought back to light and it's basically the story of her dealing with that but it is so creepy and the plot twist at the end you do not see that shit coming but it's totally worth reading so dang good <sighs> Gillian Flynn is just one of my favorite authors I think that she's so talented and I just highly recommend any of her books for October. The next book I'm going to recommend is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I have a full review of this one as well if you're interested, but it is so creepy. It's set in the 1920s. The book follows Evie O'Neill, who has a supernatural ability that she doesn't like telling people about, but she uses it as like a party trick. And so she goes to a party one night and she gets into a little bit of trouble because she's a little shit disturber. So her parents decide that they're going to send her to New York City to live with her uncle. Her uncle is the head of the Museum of Oculate, or the Museum of Creepy Crawlies, as the locals call it. The police end up finding a body that has a strange branded symbol 
on it and so they call Uncle Will into the scene and Evie realizes that her special supernatural ability might actually be used to find a serial killer but she can't tell anybody that she has supernatural abilities so she's trying to like figure out a way to make them all realize that she can help without being like yo I'm basically like a demon and can do all this shit so like let me help you and then it also follows a boy named Memphis and a girl named Theta and a couple of other characters which I'm going to let y'all go into blind because it is a good ass book and I highly recommend it for a spooky read in October because it just has like a creepy vibe to it the whole time you're reading it. Highly recommend listening to the audiobook as well so just putting that out there. And then my final book is probably one that like nobody has heard of because like I just found it in the back of my shelf and then read it and was like, yo, this is actually a pretty good book. But it is Mason by Thomas Pendleton. The book follows Mason, who is a high schooler who has a developmental delay, and he is special. He has a very special power that he hasn't told anybody about. He lives with his Aunt Molly and his sadistic, psychopathic brother named Gene. Mason has always tried to stay out of Gene's way. He doesn't like causing him any trouble, but Jean always finds a reason to punish Mason. Renee Denton was Mason's only friend as they grew up, but as they got older they kind of drifted apart. One day Renee finds herself in a situation with Jean and ends up getting severely hurt, and as Mason's abilities grow he decides that he is going to take matters into his own hands and get revenge for Renee. So if you know me, I'm like a total sucker for slasher killer books, and I did not expect it to be a slasher killer book, but Dang, this book is so good and creepy and just like, <gasps> highly recommend if you're into like, gore. Because there's a lot of it in this book. Like, a lot of it. I honestly went into the book with such low expectations. I did not expect to like it as much as I did, so I was pleasantly surprised when I was sucked in right from the first sentence. Alright guys, so that was my spooky books recommendations. Let me know down below a couple of spooky books that you read since it is October. I'm feeling in the spooky mood and I need to read some more spooky books. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!